In the last video, we rigged up a simple car in Roblox with joints. On this video, we're going to make a script that listens to the input of this vehicle seat, and we're going to use that to make changes to our hinges, which are in turn going to drive the car. Again, if you're new to scripts, we recommend you watching our intro to scripting series if you need some help. Now to start, I'm going to insert a script into the vehicle seat itself, and then create a variable for the seat. Then, I'm going to make a variable for the seat's parent, which is in this case the vehicle model. Now next, we're going to need variables for the driving hinges and for the steering hinge. Now for driving, we have two hinges, one on either side of the car. We'll call the first one left drive, and we're going to look inside of body, and then for left drive. Then for the other side, we have right drive. Now for steering, we have the steer hinge up in the front axle. To finish up the variables for the script, I'm also going to make variables for how much to steer and what the max speed of the wheels can be. So first I'm going to make a variable called steering angle. I'm going to set that to 30. And for speed, I'm going to make max speed and set it to about 10. Now keep in mind this number is not in studs per second, but rather in radians per second. And unless you want to do a lot of complicated math, I recommend starting with a number, let's say around 10, then increasing it or decreasing it as you test your vehicle to see what feels right. Now let's go on with the rest of the script. For input, I want the script to look at the vehicle seat, specifically for when the steer and throttle properties change. Now for this, we can use the changed event. But first, I'm going to make a function called onChanged and give it a parameter property. Now down here after the function's end, we're going to connect it to the changed property of the seat. Now, whenever any property of the seat changes, it's going to call this function and the name of the property that changed is going to be passed into this parameter. Now in our function, we need to handle the two cases of steer and throttle. Let's take care of steering first. When the player presses left, steer is going to be negative 1. When they press right, this value is going to be 1. And if they're not pressing anything, steer is just going to be set to 0. This means we can multiply the steer value to our steer angle to get a different angle whether the user is pressing left or right. So in the script, if property equals steer, then we want to set steering hinge dot target angle be steering angle times seat dot steer. Now keep in mind this works if you place a hinge so the first attachment is pointed up and the second is pointed down. If you have this the other way around, you're going to have to multiply this angle by negative one to get the right value. Now let's move on to the drive hinges. And this is going to work similarly to steering. Now if the player is pressing forward, throttle is going to be all the way up to one and backwards is negative one. So if the property is throttle, then we want to set the angular velocities of the left and right drives. So we're going to do left drive dot angular velocity equals max speed times seat throttle. Now right drive dot angular velocity is going to equal negative max speed times seat throttle. Again, how you set up your hinges is going to matter here. Now if you set it up like me, with the first attachments on the body of the car pointed outwards, then this code should work. Now if you put your hinges on the wheels instead, so that they're pointed inwards, then the first value here is going to actually need to be negative, and the second positive. And that wraps up all the code we need to drive this car. We'll try it out by pressing play. And so if we get into the car, pressing forward is going to make the two back motors spin the wheels. Pressing left and right, we're going to rotate the front servo, which is going to steer it. 